Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, right? Amen. And we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. And it's good to see you at the 11 o'clock worship service. Um, man, it is good to be together again as a family. And wouldn't you agree that the potluck last week was terrific? It was fun, a lot of good food, great missionary guests. And uh, Caleb was just a cutie, just charming everybody he met. So let's go over some announcements. Uh, first of all, this is the day that the Lord has made, but it's also our national day for today is Jump for Jelly Beans Day. I, di I did not make that up. That is uh, right up there. It's also National Mutt Day, so go home and love on your dog. Uh, and my particular favorite, National Avocado Day. Okay, so, and you know what avocados are good for? Guacamole, right? <laughs> okay, let's take a look at the uh, neon green glow-in-the-dark bulletin that Linda turned out this morning. Mark's got some in his hand. If you need a bulletin, Mark will give, give you one. Anyone else? All right, we'll go over the bulletin board, and then we'll welcome some visitors. We've got a few visitors today. That's great. Uh, Tuesday Bible study, we're still on that bulldozer plowing through Genesis, and it's getting really great. I mean, it started out good. It's getting better. It's 2 o'clock on Tuesdays, right in there where we had Sunday school this morning. Um, so if you're not there, you're missing out. Also... Um, we're having good attendance and excellent discussion during our Sunday school hour. So thank you for uh, showing up for that and for your discussion. We're talking about Jesus, the God who knows your name. Pretty personal. Also, uh, where did Heidi go? There you are. Do you have anything to say about the conference coming up? There you go. I just wanted to uh, talk to the people that are online if they're not here to sign the sign-up list for the Women's Conference. It's going to be held August 26th and 7th here at the church. Um, we'll try to get some itinerary information maybe online, or I'll send out an email to everybody and they can see it. Um, we have a couple deadlines. One is an RSVP, I believe, by the 17th. And then um, it's a $30 registration fee, and that is due Sunday the 21st. That's $30 U.S. dollars. Uh, yes, right? yeah. sir. Okay. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and um, anybody online that just uh, wants to call me or email me, let me know if you would like to come. We'll get you on the list and keep you updated. Well, thank you. We've been talking about this for, what, five, six weeks, seven weeks? It's a big deal, and it's right around the corner. Oh, 25 signed up. Very good. Very good. Okay, so Heidi, up, oh, Pastor. As a tie-in on that, guys, I need your help. I am not asking anybody to cook. This is going to be catered. But Friday evening at around 5, I need some guys who will come and help put out the food, clean up the kitchen, and let the ladies have a good time. And then the next day at noon, that will also be catered. But I could use some help with some guys who will serve again. So Friday evening for dinner, Saturday for lunch. So if you could help me, we are going to postpone or cancel this month the men's breakfast and we're going to serve the ladies, okay? And Lex, yes, you can get up at noon. <laughs> well, I was going to help serve. I'm going to be in Australia that weekend. So, so anyway, um, yes, sir. I have a follow-up to that. There are a couple of um, uh, scholarships for that, I guess. I don't know what other word there is, but... Um, if, if there's anybody who wants to go to that women's event and don't have the 30 U.S. dollars available at the moment, 
there are a couple of scholarships available for that. And I wanted to make sure that folks, especially online, knew that, okay? Thank you, John. Any other announcements that aren't in the bulletin? Rebecca has one. I'm reading your mind. I know what you're going to say. It is now time to collect school supplies once again for our Christmas shoebox um, in the Sunday school room or the eating room or whatever you want to call it. I have a list of things and examples of what we buy for our Christmas shoebox kids. So that's starting now because all of the school supplies are on sale. So. Okay. Thank you. Mark, would you take that mic over to Lex and have Lex introduce the visitor, please? She's not a visitor. She's been here a lot. <laughs> well, we like her here. Uh, even if it's once a year, she's a visitor to us. Uh, Kathy Derrick, who owned the property right next door to us, and uh, she and her husband are the ones that introduced us to the White Mountains. So we're very grateful for that, and thank you for being here. And we're grateful to have you. Thank you for worshiping with us. And then if you would take that mic to Gay so that she can introduce, or Tom, either one. We are really blessed to have a number of great, wonderful grandchildren. I have two of those and a great-grandchild here, Kayla, Lauren, and Jace. And they've been spending a few days with us. Okay. Thank you for worshiping with us. Long time no see from yesterday afternoon. We went for a hike yesterday, and they out-hiked me for sure. I had a good time. Any other um, announcements before we move on? No? Okay. Oh, great, Scott. Jenny? Oh, thank you. Is it up there? No. No wonder I forgot it. There it is. This is good. It's not that hard, you know. <laughs> this is the last Sunday of our fifth Sunday missions month. And I can tell you, Shirley told me that so far we've raised a little over $800 for Sam and Kelsey Richardson. So Shirley usually waits about a week for people to, you know, remember and get in gear. So uh, if you drop cash in there for missions, um, put it in an envelope or earmark your check, and we'll make sure uh, this is a big surprise. Sam and Kelsey, do, they don't know what's coming. So, uh, And then it'll be a few months before we uh, honor Jessica with the next Fifth Sunday missions. Okay? All right. Moving on to prayer requests and praises. If you have a prayer request or a praise that you'd like to offer, and Denise does. Uh, just a prayer request. Mom has some edema in her leg, um, so we're making sure she's keeping it up and, and uh, compressed. <laughs> so that's why she's not here today. Okay. You got that, Nancy? Nancy says yes. Other praises or prayer requests? Mary up front. I have an unspoken prayer request that's very close to my heart. Thank you. Okay, Mary's got that. Oh, Karen, oh, Pastor. <laughs> and we have Brother Bruce who's helping some family members right now. We need to keep him in our prayers as he right. ministers to them. Okay. He's on the road a lot. Who? Oh, Karen had her hand up. I'm um, running a campaign for Andy Gould, Attorney General. I'm just asking for prayers that he, um, the Lord's will be done in the election and that he have peace over whatever the outcome is. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Okay. That's good to know. All right. Any praises? We got that covered. That's good. That's good. If you would, uh, do we have one? Are you headed for someone? Would you head for Jim Wood there, please? And uh, 
Whoops, hang on. We got a late, got a late one. Um, they're supposed to start work on my mom's roof project. <laughs> and I just ask for safety for all the workers that are going to be there and that everything gets done in time. So. And, oh, right here, Kim. <laughs> I, I do have to just say this. Uh, my husband was driving supposedly down to Roosevelt last night and then on to California this morning for one of his business trips. And um, on his way out of Sholo around 4, I mean, we're getting messages that the power's out down in Roosevelt. There's a thunderstorm warning, flash flood warning, all this stuff. He got all the way through the Salt River Canyon. There was microbursts. People were pulling over. He's in a truck pulling a trailer. And um, he decided to bypass Roosevelt because there's no water, no air. And he got all the way to San Diego safely at 3.30 in the morning. So thank you, Lord, for that. Bless your heart. <laughs> Anything else before we go? Okay. Brother Jim Wood is going to lead us. Do you have the mic? Okay. In our morning prayer. Let's bow our heads. Our Father in heaven, dear Lord, we just come to you today with so many things to be so thankful for. We thank you for our church. We thank you for the leaders, for their guidance, their direction. We just pray that you'll continue to be with our pastoral nominating committee as they search for a, for not Tom's replacement, but his successor. And dear Lord, we just thank you so much for the many blessings you've given us. We just thank you so much for the healing. Pray with those that have been sick with COVID, whatever their illness may be. And we just pray that you'll be with all the prayer requests, both spoken and unspoken today and guide and direct the people in, their, in your way. And dear Lord, we just thank you so much for your love for us and pray that you'll continue to guide us and be our, our Lord and Savior. I see things in your name. Amen. Amen. And Jim mentioned COVID, which sparked something. Nancy, could you add Ed Davis? You know, my neighbor, Ed and Nikki Davis, talked to him on the phone. He was supposed to be up here over a week ago. And... He's recovering from COVID. So um, keep him in your prayers. You know about the, the medical history that he has had, and we have prayed for that man for months. And God is faithful and will heal him. So uh, did we have something else? Yeah, I apologize. I, I would like a prayer. We're going to leave Tuesday for uh, Port Towns with my dad, but we do travel through Seattle. And anytime you got the the liberal cities, you know, just risk is always there. So just safe protection and, uh, and just a good time with my dad. Thank got you. it. We got you covered. <laughs> okay. Time to sing. Please stand and sing with us. In Christ alone. Fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are stilled, when striving ceases. My comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone. Who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless faith, the gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the For every sin on him was laid, here in the death of Christ I live, there in the ground is born. 
from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost its grip on me for I am his and he is mine walk with the precious like to go back to that old country church and hear the songs of praise how the people would sing it would make the heavens ring at that old country church some glad morning when this life is over i'll fly away children would smile as they shouted down the aisle of that old country church. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith I can see it afar, for the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. On Sunday to see all the friends so dear to me at that old country church. When it came time for prayer, everybody would be there at that old country church. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leading on the everlasting. The years have gone by, and so many have died at that old country church. And they're on the other shore, where they'll sing forevermore, like they did at that old country church. I'm redeemed, I love divine, glory, glory, Christ is mine. All to Him I now resign. I have been redeemed. I have been redeemed. Please be seated.
get along, but I press on. Cause there's a mansion, streets of gold, I belong. go from that to this. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, we got to we got to find new people to come here to the church, man. <laughs> well, good morning. Wasn't that great or what? Thanks, Jake. Appreciate it. So today's talk is called Will You Be Welcomed into the Kingdom of Heaven? So there's this guy named Bob he made it. He got to heaven. He got there and there were two lines. And the first line had a sign over it said, this line is for the men who were dominated by their wives. It was a really long line. <laughs> then the second line had a sign over it said, this line is for men who dominated their wives. It was really short. In fact, there was only one guy. So Bob walked over and said, sir, can you explain to me how it is that you're standing here and everybody else is standing over there? He says, yeah, my wife told me to stand here. <laughs> it's probably that way even in heaven. You know what I'm saying? Okay, we're going to get started this morning. If you would help me out with a little audience participation. Um, with a show of hands, this includes you folks at Facebook. Just because you're not here, you don't get off the hook. Who wants to go to heaven when their time comes? Anybody? Well, yeah. I mean, why wouldn't we, right? From everything we've learned, it's a whole lot better than the alternative, right? Here's the reality check, though. Everybody's not going to make it to heaven. And here's the hard part. That includes some people who think they will. <clears throat> now, I've been preaching here at NBC part-time for a couple of years. My apologies, but um, I will say this is probably the most important sermon I've done. And I'm going to ask a favor from you guys today. I'm going to ask you to invest in today's talk with me. And I'll tell you how you can do that. You can do that by mentally, emotionally, and even spiritually transporting yourself to the end of your life. 
I'm talking about after all the good, the bad, the ugly, the hurts, the triumphs, the love, the pain, everything we go through in life, you get to the very end and you're standing there right in front of Jesus, face to face, as Jake just sang for us. If you can kind of transport yourself there a little bit, I believe the Word of God has a message that can help all of us today, okay? So we're going to look in the book of Matthew. You know, Jesus, in the book of Matthew, he delivers his Sermon on the Mount. It's the most important sermon ever preached, partially because it was Jesus and partially because it's just chock full of his direct instructions for how we're to live our lives. So um, he says something interesting towards the end of the Sermon on the Mount. Pastor Tom and I are studying the book of Matthew together, and when we got to a specific scripture, he says to me, this is the most disturbing scripture in the Bible to me. And that kind of stuck with me. And so I started looking at it, and I decided he's right. It is disturbing. And it's something that I wanted to talk to you guys about today. So we'll look at Matthew 7, verses 21 through 23. And remember, this is Jesus talking. It's right towards the end of his Sermon on the Mount. He says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Is that disturbing? Hang on a minute. See, I thought if I believed in Jesus... I'm good to go. I'm saved, right? If I believe in Jesus? Not necessarily. James 2, 18 and 19 says, But someone will say, You have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. So it's clear to me that not everybody who believes in Jesus is a child of God. Going back to verse 23, Jesus said, I never knew you away from me, you evildoers. Well, I wanted to understand better, who are the evildoers? Who is it that Jesus is turning away? So I did some digging. The NIV translation says evildoers. The King James Version says ye that work iniquity. The Amplified Bible says you who act wickedly. But the interesting thing is in the original Greek New Testament, none of those words are used. It actually says the ones working the lawlessness. The ones working the lawlessness. Now, stick with me a minute, okay? I'm going to connect the dots for you in a minute. The Greek word for lawlessness is anomia. And according to the Vines Expository Dictionary, anomia means everyone who doeth sin... Also law, do, doeth also lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Everyone who doeth sin doeth also lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Now it goes on to say something really important in the Vines book. It says the definition of sin sets forth its essential character as the rejection of the law or will of God and the substitution of the will of self. That's, a, that's an interesting statement right there. So when we connect the dots, what we really find is Jesus is telling the people who replace God's will with their own will to get away from him. Those are the ones who aren't going to make it to, he to heaven. And you know, it makes a lot of sense because in verse 21, he said the only ones who would go to heaven, are the ones doing the will of his father. Now Jesus gives us another kind of a, a look at this in Matthew 25, 31 through 33. He says, when the son of man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He'll put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. So I think the question here is, are we sheep or are we goats? I think each of you, just like me, have to ask ourselves, are you a sheep or are you a goat? When it kind of comes down to it, it's really, are you doing God's will in your life or are you doing your own? That's really the question. You know, I think it's funny how people are. You know, we, 
as humans. We pick and choose the things we will and won't do, and then we rationalize it to make ourselves feel better about those decisions, even if they're not good decisions. I'm going to give you a couple of examples. I know I should drive our little Jeep Renegade more often when I'm zip zipping knocking around because it's really cheap to drive. It's very economical. But boy, I like that diesel truck of mine. So I drive it instead, right? Because I like it. Besides, if you run into somebody who needs help from a guy in a truck and you leave your truck at home, you can't help them, right? Didn't I rationalize that? How about this one? I've been told, okay, I don't know if I buy this, but I've been told that the cheddar jalapeno Cheetos are not good for me. <laughs> That's what I've been told. I choose to eat them anyway because they taste really good. Just had a bag here a couple days ago. <laughs> Besides, they have jalapenos and I think like corn in them, don't they? So that means that the cheddar jalapeno Cheetos are vegetables. And they're good for me. We pick and choose what we'll do and not do, and we'll rationalize that to make even bad decisions feel better. Is that what we do in our walk with Jesus? Do we pick and choose how we will be like him? Do we pick and choose what scriptures we're going to obey and maybe which ones aren't as important? Or maybe, you know, God wrote those for somebody else, not for me. That is substituting our will in place of God's will. Exactly what it is. <clears throat> so, what if you think you're going to heaven and you find out you're wrong? Think about it. You think you're a sheep, but at the very end, you find out you're a goat. That's what I call a real bad day. Amen? And guess what? You have an eternity of torment to consider the decisions you made here on earth. How do I know that? Well, that's what Jesus said about the goats. In Matthew 25, that we, we just looked at that, but in verse 41, he said, Then he will say to those on his left, which were the goats, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. It's an eternity of torment to think about the decisions you made here. You ever thought about that? How's that going to feel? I asked you earlier to invest with me in today's talk to transport yourself to the end of your life, standing face to face with Jesus. Now I want to add something to that. You're standing there, and he looks at you and he says, I never knew you. Get away from me. How's that going to feel? Are we sheep or are we goats? Are we doing God's will or are we doing our own will? Are we applying the whole Bible to our lives or are we picking and choosing? You know, it's, it's scriptural, right? It's biblical. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, All Scripture, as God breathed, is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped in every good work. He didn't say, hey guys, pick out the ones that you want, flush the rest. That's not what he said. He said, all Scripture. <clears throat> I think most of us know deep down inside we should learn and apply the entire Bible to our lives. But we pick and choose, don't we? Let me show you something. Paul said in Romans 10, 9, if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord. Now listen, I've done that. I've done it lots of times. In fact, I've done it several times from this very pulpit. I'm going to do it right now, and I mean it too. I'm, I'm being sincere. Jesus is Lord. Amen. He is. So now I'm a sheep, right? Come on, I said it. I said it. I'm good to go, right? Here's the thing. I've also said this from this pulpit many times. Saying it ain't getting it done. This isn't a t-shirt or bumper sticker moment. Nothing wrong with a Jesus t-shirt. I've got a none of this world hat I like to wear. and You, you guys see me in my life as good t-shirts. Listen, positive messages, especially scripture. I've seen Becky in a couple of those. Um, we should do that. Don't get me wrong. That's great. But none of it's going to get you to heaven. It's just not. you got to mean it. you got to actually believe it. It's got to be here. He has to be here. Right here. You can't pick and choose. Now let's go back and look at Romans 9 again, because I picked and chose part of that scripture to make a point. Now let's look at the whole thing. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead. 
You will be saved. You can't pick and choose. It's the whole thing. Don't stand in front of Jesus. Say, Lord, Lord, didn't I declare with my mouth that you're Lord? Because if he's not in your heart, don't count. You got to believe it. And if you do believe it, I mean, really believe it. Jesus said it'll show in your life. In Matthew 7, 20, he says, thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. So I don't know, maybe we give here at church, right? We've got a slot in the entryway for giving. Or maybe we, we give to some charities. That's great. We should. But maybe we like to make sure people see it. Nothing wrong with that. We just want them to know that we're being generous. That's all. Just want them to know we're being good people, right? Wrong. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 3, not to let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. You're not supposed to give for show. That, by the way, is a, a part of the Sermon on the Mount. But do we do that? Don't get there in the presence of Jesus at the end of your time and say, Lord, Lord, didn't I put money in the slot at church? Because if you did it for the wrong reason, it's not going to get the job done. It's that simple. Maybe it's in how we serve. You know, a lot of you guys know me pretty well, and I hate to wave my own banner. I really do. To stand here in front of everybody and say, look at me, look at me. Gosh, I hate that. But man's got to do what a man's got to do, so I'm going to go ahead and do it, all right? The other day I was here at the church. Nobody else was here. I was walking through the parking lot, and there was a piece of trash out in the parking lot. I'm walking along looking at that piece of trash, and I'm thinking, I ought to go pick that up. But the devil says, ah, man, that's 15 feet away. You don't want to you know, put that kind of effort out, right? But I did. I manned up, and I picked up that piece of trash. You want to know what I did with it? Put it in a trash can. That's what it did. Yeah, boy. I'll tell you another thing. First Sundays of the month when we have communion, sometimes I'll gather up some of the empty cups from people where I'm sitting, or from the chairs. You know what to do with them? No, I rinse them out so we can use them next time. <laughs> no, I would never do that. Of course I put them in the trash. I'm a regular servant, aren't I? Yeah. Listen, I'm not saying we shouldn't pick up the piece of trash. Come on, of course we should pick up the piece of trash. But here's the question. Are we looking for a need right here in our church and filling it? Right here at NBC, are we looking for a need and filling it? Are we finding a way to help share the good news? And are we doing that because we love Jesus and love one another? Because if Jesus is really in your heart, those are the things we're going to do. Those are the fruits people are going to see in our lives every day. Don't get to the end of your life face to face with Jesus and say, Lord, Lord, didn't I put communion cups in the trash? Lord, didn't I go to church pretty regular? Lord, Lord, didn't I help that little old lady with a flat out? Didn't I? Lord, Lord, aren't I a good person? Aren't I good enough? Because it doesn't matter what you do. If he's not in your heart, if he's not your Lord of Lords, if he isn't your King of Kings, if he's not your everything, it doesn't matter. Now here's the truth about salvation. We're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone. That's it. Doesn't matter what you read. Doesn't matter what you saw on Facebook. Doesn't matter what your neighbor told you or what you want to pick or choose out of the Bible. That is what salvation is. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 says, For it is by grace you've been saved through faith. This is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Do you have that? You need to ask yourself, do you have that? Do you truly have faith in Jesus Christ so that you can live in his grace? Are you saved? Jesus said that if you are, it's going to show in your life. Amen. Now, he gave us a third way to look at this. It's a parable. Matthew 25, 1 through 13. I want to take a look at that today. He said, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however took oil in jars along with their lamps. 
The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. But at midnight, the cry rang out, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came, Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Are you a sheep, or are you a goat? I just challenge myself and you to examine your own hearts today. When you look real close, what do you see? Do you see Jesus? Or do you see a bunch of other stuff that you picked and chose to center your life on? That's the question. Are we doing God's will or are we substituting our own will instead? You know, maybe you're thinking, well, John, that sounds great. But I don't know what God's will for my life is. That's hard. It's hard to know what God's will is. No, it's not. Get in the scripture. Jesus told us what God's will is. John 6, 40. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. That's God's will. So believe in Jesus, to invite Jesus into your heart, let Jesus rule your life and be like him every day. That's God's will. If you do that, we're going to see that in how you live. We're going to know you by your fruits, as Jesus, Jesus said. I'm going to tell you something in closing, one thing that you can, you can take to the bank. When you've run your race, you've stumbled through life, you get to the very end and you're standing right in front of Jesus, face to face. He'll know. You won't be able to hide your heart. He's going to know exactly what's in it. And it's going to be too late to change because the door will be shut. Are you one of his sheep or are you in for a rude awakening? Will you be welcomed into the kingdom of heaven? I think this is a serious question every person needs to ask themselves. You get the music team to come up, that'd be great. You bow with me. Lord, I just thank you for your, your word. I thank you for the instruction, the owner's manual that you've given us. That we can find every answer to every question if we'll just look. And Lord, I pray that the, the words that we shared today, the songs that we've shared today here in service will pull people closer to you. Help them understand what it means to be a sheep instead of a goat. With every eye closed, every head bowed, if anybody here does not have that relationship with God and wants me to pray with them, I'm not going to put you on a, out in front of everybody. I'm not going to embarrass you. It's between you and God. That's what it is. But if you want me to pray with you, for you, just slip your hand up. I'm watching. God's watching. If you're home in Facebook land, God sees you. My prayer will cover you too because God is that big. Maybe you've got that relationship, but you've slipped away a little bit. Maybe you're not where you ought to be with him. Maybe he's not the ruler of your life. You're king of kings. Father, for anybody that, that's dealing with that, if they're in that place in their life, they don't have you or they're not as close to you as they should be, I'd pray that you'd soften their hearts, pull them to you, let them know how much you love them. I pray all that in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand. Please stand and sing with us.
what he wants right all he gave all and he wants you to give him all the word surrender means cease resistance to an enemy or opponent and submit to their authority you want to be a sheep that's all it takes just submit to him we had a little homework assignment for everybody and i know they were passed out anybody missing that little piece of paper raise your hand and mark will get you one i'm going to ask you to to consider doing this as soon as you have the time today. Um, basically, go home, get alone with God. Read Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Read it a couple times. And then with that scripture in mind, read the entire Sermon on the Mount, which is found in Matthew chapters 5 through 7. Using the words of Jesus as a template, examine your heart and examine your life. Is Jesus the center of your life? Or other stuff. Make sure you're a sheep, guys. Right now is when you got to make that decision. Because once you get up yonder, the door's going to be shut. If you need help, prayer, reach out. Pastor Tom and myself and any number of other folks here at the church want to help. Okay, we want to help you with that journey, right? The team has one more song to take us out on. You guys have a super week. Are y'all ready to lift the roof off this church? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Right. You, ladies, follow me. And uh, the men will follow Mary and Jake here, and we will sing the rest. So, <laughs> are you and the ready? Men echo what the yes, ladies the sing. men will echo, and the ladies will sing lead because we don't want the men to sing lead. <laughs> Hail Jesus, you're my King. Hail Jesus, you're my King. Your life frees me to sing. Your life frees me to sing. I will move all my days. I will praise you all my days. You're perfect in all your ways. You're perfect in all your ways. Hail Jesus, you're my Lord. Hail Jesus, you're my Lord. I will obey your words. I want to see your kingdom come. I want to see your kingdom come. Not my will, but yours be done. Not my will, but yours be done. Glory, glory to the Lamb. Glory, glory to the Lamb. You take me into the Lamb. You take me into the Lamb. We will conquer in your name. We will conquer in your name. Jesus came and proclaimed that Jesus reigns. Hail, hail, line of Judah. Hail, hail, line of Judah. How powerful you are. How powerful you are. Hail, hail, line of Judah. Hail, hail, line of Judah. How wonderful you are. How wonderful you are. How 
Bye.